Welcome back everyone, it's Eric and I'm glad you could join me because today we're gonna have an in-depth discussion on how to build a drying slash aging chamber for your salami or your cheese making projects. That's right, this same build can do cheese, like a cheese cave or salami. And so we're gonna cover all the equipment that you're gonna need and we're also gonna look at a few things that you wanna pay close attention to when building this chamber so that you can have success. The first thing, is getting your hands on a frost-free fridge. Now that's probably not gonna be very hard to do as most of them are already frost-free, but it is worth mentioning. Now that you have your fridge, the next thing you wanna pay attention to is airflow. It's quite possibly the most detrimental element to aging drying cheese or salami. And so before I do anything, I wanna check out the type of airflow that this refrigerator delivers. When I close the door, notice that little switch that I'm holding down, a fan turns on and it stays on as long as the door is closed, regardless of whether the compressor is on. And what it's doing is that's really drawing air from the fridge over the coils and then back down the wall again. So when I put my hand on the very back, I can definitely feel a lot of air movement. So my first recommendation when building a chamber is to place strings all throughout the entire chamber. And this is gonna kinda give you an idea what kind of air movement is happening inside your refrigerator. What I'm looking for is next to no movement. Too much airflow is gonna cause your cheese or salami to dry too fast. In the case of salami, it's gonna give you dry ring and in certain cases, case hardening. Notice my strings right now, depending on where they're located, some are moving more than others and I'm not comfortable with this level of movement. So the first thing that we need to do is unplug our refrigerator, remove the fan and then disable that particular switch. As we begin this particular build, I want you to know that every chamber is different. Some are gonna require more modification than others. As a matter of fact, at the end of this video, I'll show you a second chamber that required little to no modification. So here's what we're gonna do. At the top of the fridge, when you remove that front panel, it exposes the controls. Here is the switch that is activating the fan, and this particular fridge allows me the option to just simply unplug it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug both of those plugs, and as soon as I do that, this particular switch is now disabled. But I don't want to leave those plugs open, so we're just going to secure those with some electrical tape and then place them back inside. Now, since we're already up here, let me just show you a couple little things that I did. Directly behind the controller, you're going to notice a hole that's filled with like that great stuff foam. And what I did was I just went ahead and drilled in another hole opposite of that one. That particular panel, there's no need to worry about hoses or gas lines or anything like that. And so I drilled probably what is about a one and three quarter inch hole, enough to fit all of my cables through it. If you look directly above that, I put another hole at the very top. That's just a piece of sheet metal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run all of my cables from the top into that refrigerator. And you'll see how we'll do that in a second. Uh, at the very top with some Velcro, I attached a surge protector, like a socket strip, you know, kind of thing going on. And um, that just securely fastens right there at the top of the fridge. And I'm going to have everything plugged into that. Okay, so we've disabled the switch. And now it's time to remove the fan because it's just blowing way too much air. I do want some air to blow across the coils. And that brings us to our very first piece of equipment. That's going to be a computer fan. Now, don't worry. There's going to be a link in the description box below where you can find everything that you need if you want to have this kind of build. But if you look at the computer fan, there's going to be an arrow that tells you which direction the air is going to be blowing. And what we want is we want the air to blow onto the coils. And the second piece of equipment that I have is a speed control for the fan, although I would put this in the optional category, not necessarily mandatory. I normally run mine at about 80%. But these little fans don't blow a tremendous amount of air. So if you run it at 100%, that's fine too. Uh, either way works. So what we're going to do is unplug it. And we're going to go ahead and just place the fan so that the direction of the air is blowing directly onto the coils. Basically the same as the other fan, just a whole lot slower. And I'm going to take the plug for that fan and I'm going to run it through the holes that I pre-drilled at the top of the refrigerator. And now we have our cable inside of the fridge and we can go ahead and hook up the fan. And that's it, our airflow issue has been solved. Now that our fan is wired up, we can go ahead and place that back and then replace that guard. I do wanna make sure that the wires aren't in the way when I do that, but this is what that's gonna look like when we're done. And that particular housing is just easily mountable with a couple pegs that are on the right and left side. And I'm pretty sure that most of them uh, work similarly. 
the next thing we want to talk about is controlling the atmosphere inside of our chamber. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in two simple extension cords. Nothing fancy, just big enough to fit through the holes that I've got pre-drilled right at the very top. And then we're going to string those into the chamber itself. I like to run the cables along the side of the shelves and it just keeps everything nice and tidy, but it really doesn't matter. Once you have your cables in place, it's time to talk about the next piece of equipment. Now, this first thing I'm doing is completely optional, but from experience, I would highly suggest it. This is a black piece of foam that doesn't absorb water and I put it in the chamber so that I can put any electrical equipment over it and that way it's not sitting directly on the floor in the event that there's a situation where, you know, water or a lot of moisture accumulates on the floor of this chamber. So once that's in place, we're going to go ahead and bring in the first piece of equipment. And this is the Evadry 2500. Now, I can't stress enough how important it is to get a good dehumidifier for your chamber. It's easy to add humidity. It's a little more difficult to remove it. And the Evadry 2500 just does an awesome job. It's actually built to handle 2,500 cubic feet. And for this large chamber, it's absolutely perfect. If you have a smaller chamber, like the one you'll see at the end of this video, then I'll suggest the Evadry 1100. And trust me when I tell you I've used a lot of dehumidifiers and not all of them, although they may look alike, work the same way. Evadry is the only brand that we've used that's given us great results consistently, so that's my recommendation if you are looking for a dehumidifier. Let's talk about the second piece of equipment that you're going to need, and that's going to be an ultrasonic cool mist humidifier. Like I said, in the description box below, there's going to be a link for my recommendations. There's a lot of different humidifiers on the market, some better than others. Some have a larger holding capacity for water. And the one you get will inevitably depend on the size of your chamber. Both of these units work together to control the humidity inside your chamber so it never gets too high or too low, which is absolutely critical in producing great salami and great cheese. Okay, we're now down to the very end of this build, and we have to talk about the controllers. These controllers, in essence, take over your equipment based off of the parameters that you have them set at. The controller I'm holding here is a temperature controller where you can plug in your refrigerator. That would go into the cooling port. And if you had a heating pad or a heating lamp, that would go into the heating port. There's also a temperature probe that comes with this particular unit, and that's going to be inside the chamber. That's going to be telling your controller what the temperature is so that it knows how to adjust the values. The next controller that you're going to need to get is a humidity controller. This one's also by Inkbird. Both of these are reliable, effective, and affordable. Uh, this particular controller controls the humidifier and the dehumidifier. Work one is for the humidifier. Work two is for the dehumidifier. This controller also comes with a probe, but it monitors the humidity level inside your chamber. And depending on what your values are set at, it's going to either turn on or off your humidifier or dehumidifier. Now, what I've done here is simply attach some Velcro strips to the very back of this unit. And that way I can stick it right to the side of the refrigerator. It's out of the way and I can remove it easily if I need to calibrate the unit later. And that brings me to another important point. The holes where your wires are coming into at the top of the fridge, don't seal those off permanently. I know you're going to want to. It'd be better to just kind of backfill them with some cloth or some towels because eventually you're going to need to pull some of those cords out and calibrate your equipment, specifically your humidity controller and your temperature controller. And you're going to want to calibrate that at least once every six months, so about twice a year. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and plug in our dehumidifier and our humidifier. Remember, work one is for humidity. Work two is for dehumidification. All right, now that we've got that plugged up, let's go ahead and plug in the refrigerator into the cooling port. And if you live in an area where it gets below freezing or freezing and your chamber is exposed to that kind of conditions, in that case, you're probably going to want to have a heating element inside your chamber. I'm going to go ahead and wire in both the temperature and the humidity probe. And I'm just going to affix that to where it's right in the center of my chamber. You don't necessarily have to put yours in the center of your chamber. You could put it on one of the sidewalls. Just make sure that it's not directly in front of where your humidifier is generating its mist. All right. So now that I've got my wires nice and tidy, and now we're going to come down to what I consider insurance for your chamber. I think that it's important to not only have one, but a couple of these awesome units. This unit is also by Evadry. It's a thermometer and a hygrometer all in the same unit. You can mount this with the magnets that are on the back of the unit, or it has a little kickstand if you want it freestanding. I like to put these in various places in my chamber as it reads the humidity and the temperature at all times. And it's just a great way 
to ensure that your equipment is reading true. If the numbers are too far off, it might give you some indication as to when to calibrate. And now it's time to plug in the computer fan, the two controllers, and power everything on. Now, at this point, remember, these controllers operate everything. So we need to program them to make sure that uh, the parameters are where we want them to be. To do that, we're gonna use the app on our smartphone. The first thing I'm gonna select is the humidity controller. As you can see, it's pretty intuitive. I'm gonna make a separate video on how to use this particular controller, but I wanna set my humidity level to 80%. This is a nice humidity level for cheese, for salami. It's gonna really slow the drying and it's gonna give you a great product. Now, as soon as I hit enter, notice my controller, it now says 80%, that's my target value. When I hit the settings, I wanna make sure that I have all of the different parameters adjusted. So we're gonna put the humidification difference value to three. We're gonna put the dehumidification difference value to three as well. I want my alarm to go off when the humidity level reaches roughly 95% on the high end, and I want my alarm to go off when the humidity reaches 60% on the low end. If the alarm does get triggered from the app on your smartphone, you can actually turn it off. Now that's with the humidity controller. And now that the humidity is all programmed up, ready to go, notice it says work one is on. So we're gonna go ahead and program the temperature controller. And the temperature controller is already pre-programmed because I did it in an earlier video, but 55 degrees Fahrenheit is what I typically like to keep it at. I want my heating difference to be two, my cooling difference to be two, my high alarm to be 90, my low temperature alarm to be at 40, my refrigeration delay to be at three minutes. And that's important because it actually keeps the compressor from burning out. And that's our drying chamber. Notice that I've got a glass window pane directly in front. Now, the problem with that is that my chamber is outside and it gets direct sunlight from about 9 a.m. to about 2 p.m. And when you're making salami, the fat can easily go rancid. So you don't want direct light. And that sunlight also affects the temperature inside the chamber. So I use a particular foil type barrier, but you can literally just tape aluminum foil if you happen to have a glass door to keep that from happening. If your chamber has a glass door and it's inside, I wouldn't worry about it. You can leave it just like that. It's not gonna affect anything. But like I said, if yours is gonna be outside like mine, then you definitely wanna protect that front to keep the temperature consistent inside your chamber. And that's it. With all of those pieces that come together, you now have a controlled temperature environment, a controlled humidity environment, perfect for making cheese, salami, growing mushrooms, making wine, sauerkraut, you can do all kinds of stuff in a drying chamber. Let me show you this other drying chamber that I have because it's a little different. This particular drying chamber I use for salami and, um, but easily it could be used for making cheese as well. Let me explain to you what I did to turn this into a drying aging chamber. So at the top where the freezer section was, there was basically a divider. This divider looked like a plastic, basically floor. But when I started to cut at it with a knife, I realized that it was just styrofoam and I removed that entire divider between the freezer and the fridge. And between that divider, notice right there, you'll see a couple of vents. And that's where the cold is coming from. It generates from the back of the fridge. There's also vents at the top, and then again at the very top of this particular fridge unit. And when I put strings through the whole thing, the amount of air that was being blown by the fridge was minimal. And so I didn't have to do anything to it. So all I had to do to convert this into a drying chamber was remove that barrier, and that was it. I plugged up my humidity controllers, my temperature controllers, just like in the other one, and I was in business. And there you go, two examples of two different drying chambers. If you got any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you're new, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Stick around. We've got new videos dropping each week. We'll see you in the next video. Yeah.